Welcome to our draft wastewater bylaw webinar information session. I'm Darren Palmer from the Tasman District Council uh, communications team, and I'll be facilitating this afternoon's session. Uh, just quickly, a bit of housekeeping, um, should we need it, that the chat, chat function of the webinar is not being monitored today. But if you have a question, please use the question and answer function on the taskbar. Uh, we'll collect the questions and answer them at the end of the uh, presentation, which will take about 10 minutes. Uh, remember, the point of the session is to provide an overview of the wastewater bylaw and to answer any questions you may have before you lobby, lodge your submission. Full copies of our draft bylaw are available on our council website and hard copies of the document can be found at our service centres and libraries. Our presenter today is Senior Infrastructure Planning Advisor Kim Arnold, who's instrumental in drafting this bylaw. We also have Graham Fox and Jeff Cuthbertson, who are engineers in our waters and wastes team to answer any technical questions that may arise. So without further ado, um, I'll hand it over to Kim and uh, you can proceed with the presentation, Kim. Thanks very much. So, the wastewater bylaws general purpose is really threefold. It provides a regulatory means for um, council to protect the public wastewater system by controlling essentially what goes into it. Uh, and it, the bylaw is, is aimed at protecting the environment, uh, essentially what comes out at the end of our, our wastewater network and also the health and safety of the general public. Uh, and it does also cover um, trade waste um, and tankered waste. So um, it also covers some, some detail of, of what's physically, uh, how you physically connect to the, to the network. Um, we do have a separate policy that guides uh, how connections are approved. So that's separate to the bylaw. Uh, the bylaw separates wastewater discharge into, into four categories. And we'll go into a little bit more detail about that soon. Um, and allows council to, to monitor what's in the, the wastewater stream uh, by installing flow meters or samplers. And that's important um, measurements to, to understand and reduce any operational risk or, or issues that may arise in the network. So who does the bylaw apply to? Um, you see on the left hand side there that all premises discharging to the wastewater network, to a council wastewater network, whether it's domestic or industrial, commercial, uh, are covered by the bylaw. And it also does apply to, to tankered waste, um, tankered waste operators. Some of the points on the right hand side there, um, the bylaw provides a means for charging to recoup the costs of, of operational admin and, and monitoring. Uh, it, it also encourages waste minimization including water use uh, to reduce wastage of water. And it encourages cleaner production and, and importantly for us, the, the prevention of stormwater infiltration and inflow into the system. And that, that's aimed at reducing overload and, and overflows. So the bylaws is due for review. Um, so we're going through a review and amendment of an existing bylaw. So this, this, it's not a new bylaw. Uh, and it does, it defines the categories of discharge. And again, we'll explain a little bit more about that soon. We're deliberately attempting to align the wording and definitions and the rules of, the, of our bylaw, the TDC bylaw, with the Nelson City Council bylaw, which was recently adopted uh, at the end of last year. And, and it's important to note maybe the fees and charges will differ between Tasman and Nelson. Uh, we have different uh, mechanisms for de determining those fees and charges. And also the, the bylaws deliberately aligned with the Nelson Regional Sewerage Scheme requirements. And this is recognising that the trade waste operated, operators work across the regions, not just in Nelson or just in Tasman. Um, and, and we feel it's important that a common platform of rules and requirements is there throughout the region. And it also recognises that the TDC wastewater from, from right from Wakefield through Richmond and also Marpua discharged into the regional scheme. So it needs to comply with those, those regional scheme requirements. So some of the current issues in our, in our wastewater networks include stormwater inflow and infiltration. And, and the bylaw aims to prevent this. Uh, essentially, stormwater into a wastewater system is a prohibited discharge. 
Um, the bylaws same as aims to help regulate swimming pool discharges in particular. Uh, our wastewater network doesn't have capacity for pool swimming pool overflows during rain events, and these overload the network and, and cause overflows. And another another area of the pressure wastewater retake systems um, are now becoming more accepted and, and uh, more common, and the bylaw covers those as well. So as we've alluded, there, there are four, the bylaw separates discharges into four categories. Permitted is essentially domestic household wastewater. Registered is, is very similar to domestic wastewater, but it may include um, premises with devices that need special maintenance, and examples of these are grease traps and interceptors in uh, restaurants and cafes, uh, or truck wash uh, oil and grit interceptors. And council needs the ability to, to monitor the maintenance process of some of these devices. The third category there is, is a conditional discharge. Typically these are larger volumes or have the potential for significant impact on the wastewater network. Uh, due to their chemical um, components, uh, or, or both um, the volume and, and their composition. And we have examples of these, um, the Fonterra milk factory, uh, seafood or fish processors, and fruit or food processors, um, breweries, uh, commercial laundries. So, so it's okay to receive this, this wastewater, but um, they really do need the control and monitoring uh, in the form of um, records of data flow and contaminant loads to, uh, to ensure that, that they're not causing harmful effect on our, our wastewater networks. The fourth category there is, is prohibited waste and, and hopefully that's self-explanatory, but it's, um, it doesn't meet the bylaw parameters and, and it, it's likely to be harmful to the network or the environment. And as we said, you know, this, this actually does include stormwater home flow as a, as a, as a prohibited um, discharge. So in terms of our timeline, the top, top left box there, um, Council approved the draft to go out to consultation at the end of last year. Uh, the top right is where we are now currently, and we're asking for feedback and um, submissions by, by next week. And um, then the next step is at the bottom right there, um, once, once the submissions have been reviewed, um, we're looking for council to approve the final version of this bylaw. Um, we'll make any changes to, to the bylaw as a result of the, uh, the sub any submissions or, or the hearing of those submissions and deliberations by the review panel. And finally, in the bottom left there, we're aiming to have the new bylaw, the, the amended bylaw adopted by the end of June this year. So thank you, and um, hopefully that's given a bit of background and we're, we're happy to, to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, thanks very much for that, Kim. Um, much appreciated, thank you for your time. Um, just a reminder to those people who are planning to make submissions, um, the draft wastewater bylaw is now open for public consultation and uh, it closes at 4 p.m. on Monday the 7th of March. So uh, please ensure you get your submissions in by that time. Otherwise, feel free to call us at the council and um, maybe have a quick word with Kim and he'll be able to help out, answer any questions or get some specialist advice on board. Uh, but that's it from us today. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, please do uh, get in touch when, when, uh, when you feel you have a question. And um, thank you for, for attending. I'm Darren Palmer from the Tasman District Council Communications Department, uh, well, along with um, Kim Arnold and Graham Fox and Jeff Cuthbertson who have been sitting on the side very quietly and not required today. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.